So there could be good reason why a former governor could say, after being a governor, I think I want to go to the National Assembly to drive some policy outcomes, some structure that changes the country. But what's happening in our own case is that the governor seat as the next entitlement is not basically about, and if you look at the history of those former governors, the number of bills, the number of attendants in the parliament. Now look at it this way. A governor like Omaha went to the National Assembly, Senate. He has not even been inaugurated, spent two weeks. He flips to be a minister of known dis disclosed portfolio. He could be a minister of culture and tourism. So the question is, why did he want to be a senator in the first place, other than a governor? Just to have, to be in power and to have that Nigerian um, captive state structure to use to engineer himself either for vice president or president or to determine what his next son or his brother, whoever becomes the governor or who becomes senator. Who becomes... So basically, the, the motivation is dangerous. It's creating a new uh, aristocracy around democracy. Uh, and in fact, this is helped by the fact that our elections are still a tragedy. It's still what they call electoral autocracy, competitive autocracy. So if you have free and fair election, in fact, evidence shows that Omaha lost election to a Labour Party in Ebony. If INEC didn't, you know, collapse, if elections were duly, you know, uh, real time or sent to the IRF, you would have seen that Omaha lost the election. He couldn't have won. There's no way he would have won. So the fact these guys are exploiting, the fact that the electoral system is manipulable. You can purchase it. That's why the French as governor, they control the party, they get elected as candidates, they manipulate the election itself. So to cure this, the moment to have free and fair election, then if a governor is sent by his people to Abuja, it will be a governor who they trust his judgment, his advocacy skill. It will be a governor, they give a mandate, go and fight for restructuring for us. If you have an identity, maybe they fight, they give a mandate, go there and fight for physical federalism. We did it. If you are from maybe Southeast, they give a mandate, go there and fight against all forms of uh, 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 marginalization, whatever it is. Maybe from the North, you go there to focus more on agriculture. And so if you fix the electoral system, then you, you reduce state capture. And in Nigeria, the people who can capture the state is the president and the governor, those who have access to public finance. And so they use it to build dependencies around their states. And therefore, you don't even have competition. And even when there's a competition by very radical groups, young people who really want to throw off this uh, uh, slavery, this yoke, then they are stopped because they are also bought over the military, the security apparatus, and the INEC. That's why if you read political theories, the very st starting point of democracy is rule of law. If you don't have state institutions neutral, credible, then electoral democracy will be a joke. And that's really what these guys are exploiting. So, the answer is simple. We don't need these governors to come and use this National Assembly as an entitlement where they rest, collect allowances, and project you know, power.